Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare, sometimes self-care, and today we're talking hand care in the winter. You know, hand care is important year round, but during the winter, our hands can definitely take a beating, just like our face. You know, things are a little bit more dry and that can definitely manifest on our skin. And of course, there's issues with dry cracked hands, like um, raggedy and achy cuticles, and definitely, you know, just keeping your hands in good shape during the winter can be a struggle. So today I want to share a couple of different tips and tricks and strategies for keeping your hands in good shape in the winter time, but really year round. If you're so ready, give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right in. Now, when it comes to hand care, it's actually really similar to the way that you take care of the skin on your face. So we want to kind of take all the knowledge that we have about skin care and face care and really apply those techniques to the hands, starting with cleansing. Now, you know that cleansing, the skin on your face, right, can be one of the harshest things that we do to our skin, depending on the techniques and the products that we're using. And that is absolutely the same when it comes to hand care. One of the things that you want to pay attention to is the temperature of the water. You don't want it to be scalding hot. Well, that can feel amazing when your hands are super cold during the winter. It actually can strip essential moisture from your skin and it can weaken and damage the skin barrier. Yes, you have a skin barrier on your hands, just like you do the rest of your body. So you really want to get into that skincare mindset and really make sure that we're using, you know, warm but not hot water. We don't want to strip our skin. Now, the products that you use to cleanse are just as important and I don't really have a one-size-fits-all tip here but you really do want to pay attention to the type of hand wash that you're using especially at home right because there are some hand washes out there that can be a little bit more drying a little bit more stripping for the skin just like face cleansers right so you got to find that perfect one for your individual skin I personally use raw sugar I buy it at Target um, there's a little bit of fragrance in this hand wash it doesn't bother my skin but I do tend to avoid things like like essential oils or really heavy fragrance in my hand washes because that can irritate my skin. And immediately after washing your hands, you want to apply a good moisturizer or lotion. This is a step you do not want to skip for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's going to help to condition and nourish your skin so it doesn't get really dry and flaky. And sometimes, you know, you can develop like hard spots on your hands, like calluses and things really help to keep your skin conditioned and soft, but it also helps to contribute to smooth, supple, and elastic skin on our hands too. And I know that that can sometimes be a concern with the well-aging journeys. You really want to take care of your hands um, because you you know that old saying where there's like you can really tell the true age of somebody by looking at their hands. So I know that that's a concern for a lot of people. Moisturizer really is the most basic fundamental step when it comes to well-aging for hand skin. And you really don't need to seek out a special hand hand specific product. I, I find that people ask that a lot, like what's the best hand cream? And my answer really is what's the best cream for your face? Because that's probably the best cream for your hands. And I found that throughout the years, a lot of the stuff that I love on my face, I love on my hands too. Here's a couple of recommendations for you. I love the Cetaphil Moisturizing Lotion. Um, it's really affordable. It comes with the pump. So this is the one I really like to keep right next to my sink for um, right after washing my hands. It is um, very silky and nourishing, but it's not overly greasy. It doesn't um, make my hands feel too slippery. It absorbs in really fast and easily. And I think it's just a really great straightforward everyday type of lotion. So I really like this one. If you need a little bit more soothing moisture, another one that I like is the La Roche-Posay Triple Moisture Cream. So this one, it has more shea butter in it. It's a little bit more focused on helping your skin barrier. There's some thermal water that contains really great vitamins and minerals for your skin that help to support that overall healthy skin barrier function. A little bit of a thicker texture here, more of a cream texture than a lotion like the Cetaphil is. So if your hands are really really dry and ailing this is a great one and a nice formula that comes in a pump 
But if you need something a little bit smaller to carry around with, you can absolutely decant your lotions and creams into uh, travel size tubes that you can throw in your, your bag or your purse or whatnot. But one that comes in a nice easy to go size is the La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Hands. Now this is an interesting one because the texture, it's more balmy and ointment like than the lotion and cream that I just mentioned. It has a little bit more, um, almost like a gel kind of balmy ointment texture and it's very occlusive and occlusivity is a really great quality to find in your hand products because it really helps to hug and seal everything in. Now another cream that comes in a slightly smaller format that would be handy for carrying around with you but is also a really good one to know about if you have very rough skin on your hands or very itchy skin. This is the Shiseido Urea 10% cream and this is something that is really great as I mentioned if you have really rough skin on your hands uh, urea is an ingredient that can help to loosen um, what like kind of holds all of that rough skin um, in place. So it helps to loosen up keratin and that's what kind of helps the buildup of the hard skin on, on our hands, really anywhere, right? But it, it also is what can, can kind of contribute to eczema plaques as well. So it's not exfoliating in a way that is aggressive and potentially irritating. It just loosens up those bonds so that that skin can soften up and become more smooth. Urea is a multi-purpose ingredient though. It is a, an anti-inflammation and anti-itch ingredient. So if you get that real deep itchiness in your hands, I do, when my skin is really dry, urea can bring some relief into the deeper layers of the skin. But it's also a barrier supportive ingredient as well, which as I've emphasized, we wanna think about the skin on our hands like the skin on our face. One of the biggest concerns for wintertime skincare is barrier care, right? We gotta take care of the barrier on your hands too. So here's a quick tip for you and something I love doing in the winter is adding a mix in to boost my hand cream. So this is something that can really, really help. There's a few ways to do this. One of my very favorite ways is to add a few drops of oil into the palm of my hand with the moisturizer, mix it all together and apply it to my hands. This is actually so easy it only takes like an extra two seconds but just a drop or two of your favorite oil really doesn't matter which one it is whatever you have on hand really boosts the emolliency and the moisture and the skin conditioning and skin softening effect of your moisturizer um, some oils can even add a little extra occlusivity not a lot but a little bit and sometimes that little bit is all that we need uh, it can really help to nourish the skin if I have a little bit more time sometimes I rub into my cuticles which can get kind of uh, raggedy and sometimes they split and get kind of achy during the winter so sometimes rubbing a little bit of that oil and lotion mixture straight into your nail bed and into your cuticles can actually go a long way to keeping them in good shape and as I mentioned it is something that just takes a uh, one extra second truly to do now if you have the type of hands that really need the occlusivity your skin is really really dry and you really have to seal that lotion in Try adding a little squirt of like Aquaphor or CeraVe healing ointment, a uh, petrolatum based ointment type of product. So petrolatum is a very occlusive ingredient. You know, this is all the rage when it comes to slugging because it seals everything and helps to enhance skin glow. It's the same for your hands. The petrolatum creates a barrier on your skin that helps to hug all that moisturizer in. You could even put a little oil on underneath too and hug in all of that emolliency, but it also works it works as a two-way barrier. It keeps things in, but it also helps to protect your skin from outside elements. So if you're not in the best habit of wearing your gloves in cold weather outside, that can really dry out your skin and be very harsh on your skin. The petrolatum acts as a, a, a protectant. Um, it can help protect your skin from being chapped by the wind and just the cold elements. Now let's go back to that well aging journey and talk about treatments for your hands, especially to address the signs of aging on our hands. Because as I mentioned, your hands can age in a different way than the skin on your face, but we do want to think about hand care the way we think about face care. And so one of my favorite things to do as part of my nighttime routine uh, right before I go to sleep is I'll do a little bit of a hand treatment and I'll work in some type of collagen stimulating ingredient into said hand treatment. This does not have to be complicated. Again, think about how you treat your face. You want to address the signs of aging, so we do want a collagen stimulating ingredient 
ingredient that's what helps keep the skin firm and elastic and helps to resist the formation of fine lines and wrinkles right so it helps keep your skin nice and plump so collagen stimulating ingredients include retinol vitamin c five percent and up of niacinamide those are my three like standards like really reliable collagen stimulating ingredients and so i will usually switch around just kind of depending on what skincare i have on hand but i definitely take the season into consideration retinol is amazing for well aging but it is a photosensitizing ingredient and if you're not super like strict with your body sunscreen um, in the winter body sunscreen is not a thing for me <laughs> because i'm covered up from here here <laughs> hat right forehead scarf maybe up to my nose mittens you know big nice long coat layers 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 so my skin's not really being exposed to the sun that's when i'm going to break out retinol for my hands in the summertime more skin is exposed body sunscreen can get sweat off very easily i usually will go towards something that is more sun protective instead of photosensitizing like a vitamin c and niacinamide's good all year round because it doesn't have any of those issues right so really do consider the season that you're applying this and if you're not super duper like um, protecting your hands from the sun when you're in a sunny or high uv environment don't bother with the retinol. Vitamin C can give you such really fantastic results. Niacinamide as well. But build in those collagen stimulating ingredients. All three of those ingredients I talked about also help to brighten the skin as well. Sometimes we can get discoloration on our hand from sun damage or sometimes, um, you know, our hands are hard working. They get beat up, they get scratched, they get hyperpigmentation. Um, all kinds of things can happen. You get cuts and, and scars and things like that. So all of these ingredients all can help address those other uh, issues with our hands as well and give it nice even bright tone too so let's talk about nails and cuticles because this is an area for me in the winter that really suffers you know the cuticles can definitely get raggedy that skin can kind of harden and lift up and then they get snagged on like your clothes and then they start to rip off and oh my gosh that hurts so bad right so one of my first tips for you when it comes to really year-round cuticle health is do not cut your cuticles I know it is tempting to do so. Your nails look really good when you do that. When you cut back the little cuticle, it makes your nails look longer. It makes your nail beds look neater. Don't do it though, because it actually, it's so easy to cut more than the cuticle. And then um, it is possible for that skin to become very raw and exposed. You actually are opening yourself up to potential infection as well. But quite honestly, it just doesn't feel good. And for from a more of like that vanity standpoint too, I just find when I cut my cuticles, uh, the cut is never super duper even. And so it actually makes my cuticles more like rough and raggedy in the long run. What I would suggest you do instead is to push your cuticles back. Do not cut them, but get into the habit of pushing them back one once a week or once every two weeks. I'm at about once every two weeks when I remember to do it. What I like to do is I like to use um, like an orange stick um, or like a plastic version of that with the little flat end so you can kind of get underneath and sort of gently push the cuticle down. I like to use the Sally Hansen cuticle gel. So what this does is actually is like very hydrating and it softens the cuticle. So it allows you put it on and then just like wait like 30 seconds and then start pushing your cuticles back because it softens the cuticle up and helps it gently lift and loosen from the nail bed. So you can get that orange stick um, under there and push a really gently without really having to scrape at your nail bed. So it's just a really great way to to push the cuticles back super duper gentle. Once you get into the habit, you establish that your cuticles are going to look amazing. Now let me share with you my routine for ailing or cracked hands. So your skin is super duper dry. Maybe it's really itchy. Maybe some of the skin is cracked. Maybe it's bleeding. Maybe your cuticles are feeling really, really raw. Here's what I suggest you do. Using any oil of your choice, rub the oil all over your nails and into your cuticles. This is going 
going to help really nourish and soften and protect the area that's really ailing. You can also put the oil all over your hands, wherever you have cracked skin. The oil, again, is, is conditioning, it's softening. It also um, can help with your skin barrier. Really, any oil will do. I particularly like marula oil and borage oil is for very, very dry skin. The fatty acid profiles of these particular oils have a lot of omega-9 fatty acids in them. And again, that's something that really helps with very, very dry skin. It's very rich and nourishing and can help support a healthy moisture barrier function. Then apply a nice generous layer of your favorite moisturizing product. It could be a moisturizing lotion or a cream, whatever you have on hand that you like, really slather your hands with it. And then I would suggest topping everything off with a layer of a petrolatum based product like Aquaphor, CeraVe, or Vaseline. You do wanna look for something that has like 40% or more of petrolatum. And you can really decide where the areas on your skin are really ailing. If you have areas, patches that are cracked, really rough, like put a nice thick generous layer over those areas with the petrolatum. It helps to promote the healing process. It also protects that raw and vulnerable skin from infection. So definitely cover those areas. If your biggest area of concern is your cuticles, you can rub the petrolatum all around, along the, the base of the cuticle and the nail just to really help seal in the oil that you put there and the moisturizer that you put there or if it's just your whole hands are in trouble put the the layer of petrolatum all over your hands alternatively you can also mix petrolatum into your moisturizing um, cream and then apply that all over your hands too it's absolutely fine if you put it all in one layer or if you want to top off like cracked skin or cuticles separately with the petrolatum put that on as the third step and then the fourth step to really solidify it all in, right? Because your hands are going to be pretty thick, right? Is to use um, some gloves to cover your hands while you're sleeping. What the gloves do is two things, right? The gloves are going to help seal in all of those layers and really hug them close to your skin to really help to promote the absorption of all of those things. We want those to get deep into the skin to really nourish and promote healing. But it's also going to keep all that residue off your sheets when you go to bed and out of your hair and off of your face, right? So you can really get um, any type of gloves. If you have cotton um, gloves hanging around the house that you usually would wear outside you can use those um, you can also get um, cotton gloves off of Amazon for very um, affordable price sometimes they're labeled as eczema gloves I recently got these off of Amazon these are from Kitsch and these are interesting because these gloves are they're cotton based but they actually have a gel lining in them that's infused with like shea butter and I believe jojoba oil and they're nice on their own um, because you it's supposed to sit close to your skin and that your skin is supposed to it's going to infuse with your skin all of the steps i just told you are going to help your skin mend a lot faster than just a little bit of gel sitting close to your skin um, but what i like about these two like the little gel lining will help you can put a bunch of stuff on your your skin um, when you put these on it's absolutely fine but what i like about them i'm trying to put them on the gel makes it a little bit weird when you don't have like the petrolatum and oil on but what i like about these gloves is they actually are like the tech gloves so you can use your your uh, phone while you're wearing these um, which i think is really nice because that's definitely one of the drawbacks about putting gloves on your hands at night you're like wait a second I'm not I'm not ready to go to sleep just yet so these are kind of nice um, these were under $20 you can use these over and over again even once the gel lining is gone you can still use them now if you don't want to invest in any type of gloves or you just want to like get down to treating your skin tonight you don't want to go to the store or wait for an order just put cotton socks over your hands. Seriously, this does not have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be expensive. So as you can see, you really want to think about the skin on your hands the same way you think about the skin on your face. And so I hope that this video gave you a little bit of clarity and some guidance on how to take care of your hand skin the same way you take care of your face skin, but make it simple and easy. If you love this video and it was helpful, but you haven't hit subscribe, please, I would be so honored if you would subscribe to my channel, especially if you want to see some 
some more wintertime skincare content. I have a lot coming up for you. This is a season where I have struggled in the past with my skin, so I'm so happy to uh, share with you all the things that I've learned and all the products that I found that are helpful for keeping your barrier strong and your skin moisturized and comfortable. And hey, if you've got some skincare tips for your hands that I didn't cover today, definitely drop them in the comments below because like I always say, we're all here to help each other out. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe wherever you are in the world, whether it's winter or summer where you're living. I'm sending you so much love. Thank you for being here with me today, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.